Um, good afternoon. Um, I'm giving this presentation instead of Blash Kuritnik, um, who left for another meeting, as I was told. Um, and um, uh, I thought I would prepare um, it like this. First, I shall speak on the disease itself. I presume there is none uh, of the patients with the ALS present here. So this needs some introduction. Then I will tell what is the present uh, um, um, uh, of the treatment in this condition, showing uh, our own results. Um, so this is, will be an analysis of 10 years of, 10 years of uh, our ALS center here in Ljubljana. And then I'll go to the past and then to the future. Actually, um, I'll start with the, um, with the uh, description of the disease. ALS is uh, a, a purely motor disease. No sensory uh, sight is affected, and it's, um, in fact, a disease of the upper uh, and lower motor neurons. They are situated in the mo either in the motor cortex or in the brain stem and spinal cord. Um, it um, causes a diverse um, clinical picture, because uh, uh, approximately one-third of the uh, in one third of patients, it starts uh, um, um, uh, at the bulbar muscles, so it causes uh, problems with speech and uh, uh, swallowing. Um, most of the other, in most of the others, it starts um, at the spinal level and causes weakness, atrophies, um, spastic paresis um, in the limbs and trunk. Um, uh, it usually starts uh, focally somewhere in the body, and then it spreads uh, to, the other, to the other parts. Uh, in many of the patients, it finally causes um, inability um, uh, to speak, inability to swallow. And finally, in many, actually in the majority of them, the death comes because of the, of the respiratory um, 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 uh, um, defects. Um, it is a disease that is uh, rather rap rapidly progressive. Um, uh, it usually, um, the, the usual delay of the diagnosis after the symptom onset to the diagnosis is uh, approximately one year. And from this time, to the time of their death, it's another two years, approximately, and the majority. Uh, some of them can survive for quite longer, even more than 10 years, but the majority, um, they die rather early. Uh, because of this rapid progression, um, the medical side needs um, uh, to be very effic uh, efficacious uh, in the treatment, otherwise we are too late. We need to um, um, take care of the needs of the patients uh, rather quickly. Otherwise, um, it's rather too late. So what we usually follow is the res respiratory condition and um, um, their uh, body mass that they are not losing their uh, um, uh, weight uh, too early. And when it comes to the to the treatment of this disease. This is current situation, actually, that I was intending to, um, and I was intending to use our own um, results to um, 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 illustrate this. Um, I don't know whether they will work. Um, this is the slide that shows uh, what we can treat, what kind of treatment we can use. It is actually symptomatic treatment. It is a neuroprotective treatment. There is no uh, curative agent uh, that would uh, elim eliminate the, the cause uh, of the disease. Um, this is a writing of uh, one of our patients, uh, unable to speak already. Um, please help us. Please help me um, uh, find some uh, uh, cure for me. And. This is to show that it is not only a uh, medical profession that, it, that is asked for help. This is uh, a writing of a patient with ALS who wrote a book uh, that is on the uh, right-hand side. 
And um, it goes like this. I've consulted priests, shamans, physics, bio, uh, beekeepers, body workers, and so on and so on. And this is the real situation. So many of, many of the patients um, that we see um, uh, would ask for help elsewhere. Because what we are saying from the very beginning is there is no cure. Uh, we cannot save your life. This is uh, the whole truth. Um, yeah, um, our um, center of, uh, for uh, ALS treatment um, at the Institute of, Ljubljana, uh, in, of Clinical Neurophysiology in Ljubljana was established 2002. Um, and we really started from the very beginning. We didn't, we were, we didn't have any possibility for the uh, uh, artificial ve ventilation from the very beginning. We were uh, slowly establishing um, uh, a department where uh, we can face this problem now nowadays. And uh, the analysis I'm referring to, and I will be showing a few slides, um, now is um, uh, uh, really 10, um, um, is, is, our, uh, is the analysis of 10 work, uh, years. It started January 1st, uh, uh, 2003, um, and ends um, December uh, 31, um, uh, 2013. And uh, this is uh, a descriptive statistics of it we have seen I can't remember the exact number, seven, uh, 270, let us say three patients at that time, and this is the statistics on that. Um, it is usually, um, 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 usually the, the situation that the male patients outnumber female by three to two, while our statistic says there's no difference actually. It is approximately half-half. Um, um, but um, when looking at the um, 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 at this more carefully, we see that males uh, outnumber female patients at the younger ages. This is uh, the year uh, of the onset, so the disease uh, affected um, patients uh, at the age of 30 and so on. Um, so they outnumber them uh, at younger ages, while at the older ages there's much more uh, female patients. This is a usual situation also in other statistics. Uh, the mean age of onset of the disease was in our group 64, which is kind of a usual uh, thing that we uh, see. It rarely starts before the age of 40, but it affects uh, older uh, uh, people as well. And this is, um, perhaps we remain with this statistical data um, in, the, in this first line here. This gives number uh, of uh, male patients, so it is 271, all of them. Uh, it was approximately 50.6% were male uh, patients. This is age uh, uh, at symptom onset, which is approximately a year before the disease uh, was um, uh, diagnosed. Surv this is a mean survival of all patients here, um, which is approximately slightly more than two years in um, uh, our group. There was a diagnostic delay of 15 months. Um, this is an approximation, uh, mean, mean number. And um, there is this um, um, number showing how many patients uh, receive this uh, tube feeding device uh, into their stomach. So it is approximately uh, one third of them that were treated uh, like this. And another one third was uh, artificially ventilated. And these numbers here um, uh, only say, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, are telling you of, uh, or something of the um, uh, non-invasive ventilation. It is very few patients in our series that, are, that decided for the invasive ventilation, which prolongs life. Um, it is the, it's always the question of the quality of life. And we now have six such, such patients uh, in this series here, which is only 2.2%. Um, um, 
all the text is lost for whatever reason. Um, uh, this graph here shows um, um, the year of enrollment uh, of these patients and the percentage of how many of uh, the patients enrolled uh, in each particular year into our group uh, received uh, either uh, insertion of the feeding tube or it is uh, a dark blue uh, color here, were ventilated. And you can easily see, uh, we cannot really count on these uh, two years in 2011 and 2012 because patients are still alive and perhaps some of them were not, are, are still not in a need to be fed artificially or ventilated artificially. So um, it is very obvious that there is more or less constant number of tube insertions throughout these years here. Um, the procedure is well established, um, was available from the very beginning, so um, it is no, um, uh, um, um, it is very clear that um, um, everybody who um, was in a need received it from the very beginning. While there is this constant uh, rise in the percentage uh, of patients that were artificially, uh, non-invasively ventilated. This is because we uh, really didn't have um, 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 possibilities from the very beginning, either from the, um, um, uh, the machines were not available, there was no personnel trained in this um, at our institute. Now you see uh, uh, the mean number is one third that was ventilated in these 10 years, but it is um, um, uh, to be seen now that this uh, uh, the number steadily increases year by year and we reach 50% something uh, uh, ven ventilated in this regard. That is the number that actually um, uh, also uh, is published for example for, for, for patients in northern uh, uh, Italy, which is more close to us. They are well-organized uh, centers they have there. Um, yeah, I was telling you about uh, these two types of symptomatic treatment, except to dysphagia, which is mentioned here, and the respiratory problem, problems, which is mentioned here, there is other uh, needs of these patients for the, uh, for the um, uh, symptomatic treatment. And this is just um, 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 and to mention that what else can be um, uh, treated to improve the quality of life of, the, of, of these patients. Um, I, didn't, uh, I didn't mention yet, I believe, whether it comes now. Yeah, I didn't um, mention uh, the possibility of um, neuro uh, protection. There is only one drug now available um, still, which is called Triluzol, and this is the study that proved it, its efficacy. It's a modest one at most. It prolongs uh, a little bit of life of this patient. Some say um, approximately for three months, the others say up to six. Um, it is uh, since um, that time uh, that it became available here in Slovenia, uh, approximately half of the patients um, uh, actually ask for such treatment when um, 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 explained uh, what are the expectations. Um, um. This is the past, um, and very likely not the whole past at all. Many, many, many um, uh, uh, of drugs have been tried. This is, these are only drugs. The, the drugs that are here are only mentioned. Uh, um, they, they underwent a proper testing, clinical um, testing, and uh, there, was, there was no success, with the exceptions of this Riluzol. Very likely this is not um, containing all the drugs. Um, and um, at the very end, I. Um, wanted to show that there is, this is a very lively field in the, uh, in the medicine. There's many, many trials going on. When one clicks uh, on, this, on this website, clinicaltrials.gov, um, it comes out 733 ongoing studies or just finished studies uh, on, it is not just on the treatment, it is also on, on the research. 
um, in this field. Here is mentioned some of them, diaphragm, uh, diaphragm pacing, um, and there is uh, different drugs that are tested and so on. Um, and uh, there is an, another area in this field which I call new promising approaches to, for treatment. You see, whatever I um, show to you uh, proved not to be effective in the past. And the, uh, the main idea was uh, to attack the cause of the disease. Now um, there are other thinkings. Why not to treat muscle? Uh, the Ch Charcot, um, uh, who first described the disease, uh, um, actually mentioned is that the muscle may be the site of affection, one of the, one of the sites of early affection. It has been found that no go A uh, is present in such muscle. This uh, uh, protein actually inhibits uh, regrowth uh, 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 of, of, of the axons and prevents renervation. So by blocking it, uh, mice models survived for uh, longer. And there is another drug which affects contractile mechanisms. Again, um, um, uh, trials on mice only uh, were conducted and uh, proved also to be effective. And there is, many of you uh, would know of the stem cells. Um, the idea to use stem cells in this condition is actually not to um, replace um, uh, neurons that died already, because it is, um, at least to my head, would be very, very unlikely that it would regrow, reach the muscle, and on the other side, it would contact all the uh, necessary afferents and descending fibers uh, and start to function. So it is only aimed to approve survival of the disease neurons already by um, um, production of neurotrophic factors and modulating the immune system. And one of the fields is just to treat cachexia, nutritional uh, status, um, and uh, fatty acids are uh, used for this purpose, prolong life in mice, and olanzapine is a neuroleptic drug that causes uh, body mass to uh, raise up. Uh, both these drugs are, are currently tested in uh, um, human population. And there is kind of a genetic treatment um, that would be perhaps available in, in the next years, which is um, using antisense, anti-gangliosite that would attack um, the protein, uh, the proteins that uh, really um, perhaps cause this disease. Uh, there was a group of my collaborators on the uh, last slide uh, showing that we did what we, were we expected uh, to do. This was, you, you all know this action uh, with the uh, ice bucket. Um, and I just wanted to thank uh, uh, the collaborators with this slide, which is again missing. Thank you.